Let's turn back to the situation in the Middle East now, where Israeli troops are still massing near the border with Gaza. And some aid has made it in from Egypt. Intense diplomatic efforts continue. Rishi Sunak's just back from his trip to the region. And he's returned to a Conservative Party reading from two bruising by-election defeats. A short time ago, I spoke to Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick. Minister, we know that around 20 lorries have crossed from Egypt to Gaza in the past day or so. Do you expect more aid to arrive today and during the week? Well, I think this is a very welcome first step, but it's not the end. We clearly need to work very closely with the United Nations and with Egypt and Israel to ensure that further trucks and consignments of humanitarian goods can come into Gaza. We're coordinating closely with those partners and have been arguing at the highest level for further humanitarian assistance to come to the civilians in Gaza who are suffering. But it, you know that there are British citizens amongst those civilians in Gaza. Do, do we have any idea yet how many of them there are and if any of them are being held as hostages? Well, there are British nationals who live or have been staying in Gaza and they have uh, notified the Foreign Office and registered with them and we're now keeping in very close contact with them. We're trying to work to enable their... Uh, exit from Gaza if they wish to do so through the Rafah crossing. At the moment, unfortunately, only humanitarian yeah. assistance has been able to pass into Gaza and no individuals, even foreign nationals, have been able to leave. But that's something that we continue to raise with all of the parties and we're doing everything we can to support them. What, what's uh, the scale of it? Last week, uh, the Foreign Secretary told me that 10 would not be an unreasonable estimate. Do you have a better idea today how many... British nationals there are? Well, as regards the hostages, as opposed to British nationals who are, who are staying in Gaza, um, we, it's still uh, a complex situation and we're working closely, but that's around the correct number. Um, we've been working with countries around the region, such as Qatar, which is an important uh, and reliable partner in the Middle East, uh, to try to secure the release. We should yep. celebrate the fact that two innocent civilians have now been released, and American nationals, and we will work uh, with all of our partners to try to secure the release of uh, the remaining British citizens who are there. The Foreign Secretary said last week um, that he wanted the Israelis to show restraint and d discipline. Uh, other Israeli al allies, Biden and so on, have been saying the same thing. Now, this imminent... Uh, ground invasion hasn't happened yet. But um, last night, the chief of the Israeli general staff, and I want to show you this, issued what I think it could only be described as a pretty bellicose statement. Here's what he said. We will enter the Gaza Strip. We will begin an operational professional mission to destroy the Hamas operatives, the Hamas infrastructure, and we will also keep in our minds the images and the scenes and the fallen from the Shabbat from two weeks ago. That is uh, a commander speaking to his troops on the eve of war, but I think the point here is there is no chance of averting an invasion on the ground, is there? Well, we have confidence that Israel will take all the steps that it can in the circumstances to avoid uh, civilian lives being lost. But the real tragedy here is that Hamas, who started this war by committing those appalling barbaric atrocities in Israel, deliberately enmeshed themselves with the civilian infrastructure in Gaza, using Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, as hostages uh, to their own political aims. And so it, it, it is entirely likely that more civilian lives will be lost in this appalling conflict. Your but we have to defend Israel's right to uh, secure its borders, to release yeah. the, pro the hostages, and to bring a degree of security uh, to their situation. What, what we need Israel to do is to surgically degrade and eradicate Hamas and their infrastructure in the Gaza Strip so that Palestinians can be free from Hamas and Israel can have the security 
that it needs. You, the, the word you use today is surgically. Last week, James Cleverly talked about restraint and discipline. C can I just ask you about that? Because this is going to be uh, an invasion which uh, it takes place in a closed, uh, sort of packed, urban situation, hundreds of kilometres of tunnels. How is it going to be possible for there to be a surgical operation when there are also still a million people, even if the you know half of them move to the south, still going to be a million people in there? Well, we believe that Israel's army will use uh, restraint. They've already waited uh, for a significant period before taking further action. They've sought the evacuation of as many people as possible from uh, the northern quarter yep. of the Gaza Strip. And they will do all they can to protect civilian life. But you're, you're absolutely right to say that this is an immensely challenging situation for them and, of course, for innocent Palestinians who we want to do everything we can uh, to protect because they are not Hamas. Hamas is using innocent Palestinians for their own political well, aims. Well, let me ask you about that just very briefly before we move on to your own areas of responsibility. Um, Israel has said that after this part of the operation is over, however it ends, there will be no ties with Gaza. They're going to cut off ties with Gaza, i.e. no water, no power. And the thousands who cross every day to work in Israel will have no access to that work. Do, do you think that's right? Well, that's a decision for, for Israel, and I, I'm not, it's not for the British government to tell them uh, whether or not uh, Palestinians who live in Gaza should okay. be able to go to work in, in Israel. We, of course, okay. want to see a world in which Israel and the Palestinians are able to live in peace and security together, however distant that seems today. What the Prime Minister okay. and the Foreign Secretary have been doing in recent days, uh, meeting leaders throughout the region, is trying to work to secure right. the beginnings of that peace and, of course, to prevent a wider escalation of the conflict into a regional war. All right, let's just ask about something that we might do. Um, you've announced that under the Illegal, illegal Immig uh, migration, Immigration Act, there's going to be a cap mm. on refugee numbers, except for those from Ukraine, Afghanistan and Hong Kong. Would you consider adding uh, Palestinians to that list? Well, we already have a global scheme which is operated by the United Nations on our yeah, behalf. But I'm thinking and they, about they choose individuals. A safe who, legal route here for Palestinians. Well, well that, that is a safe uh, legal route. They choose people at their discretion who they consider to be the most vulnerable uh, in the world. And the idea of the cap is that we consult local authorities across the country, better understand what capacity there is. And if there is further capacity, then uh, think about increasing a scheme like that so that more people can come. But, but Since 2015, remember, that we have granted over 530,000 visas for humanitarian yeah, grounds. But you, a very I, large number, I, I, the largest I'm number just in our modern whether there might history. be a specific scheme for Palestinians. Well, well, I think at the moment, our priority is simply to get the British yeah. nationals out of Gaza oh. and to ensure there's as much humanitarian relief there. That that's the first step. It's but, quite a long way ahead before we could reach the point where we might be able to uh, see more people leaving Gaza. Because at the moment, uh, Egypt, for example, right. is not willing to admit refugees, and we understand the reasons behind that. One last thing on, on this whole area of, uh, of migration. Foreign Secretary said to me last week that if people were seen to be breaking terrorism laws by displaying support for Hamas, they'd be arrested, if not on the day, at some point. Um, has anyone yet been arrested? And we saw yesterday uh, people chanting jihad and so on. Uh, I know that there are arguments about exactly what jihad means, but uh, are we actually using the law in the way that Foreign Secretary and uh, Home Secretary have uh, indicated they would to clamp down on people who are intimidating in the streets, who are however obliquely chanting in support of terrorism? Well, l let me be clear. Chanting uh, jihad on the streets of London is completely reprehensible, and I never want to see scenes like that. Uh, it is inciting terrorist violence, and it needs to be tackled with the full force 
of the law. Ultimately, okay. uh, it's an operational matter for the police and the CPS whether uh, to okay. press charges. Arrests have been made, and there has been oh, really? um, that there have been arrests uh, since the beginning of uh, this situation. And we want to make sure that the police do everything that they can to protect under terrorism British Jews. legislation. Um, there have been arrests under terrorist legislation, and we want to do everything that we can to okay. protect British Jews. Okay. But but this is a broader okay. question beyond just legality. It also is a question about values. And there should be a consensus in this country that uh, chanting uh, things like jihad is completely reprehensible and wrong. All right. And we don't ever want to see that in our country. Minister, I'm only moving you on because, of course, this week there's been um, a couple of big by-elections. Some of your colleagues are saying that the problem for your party is that Rishi Sunak isn't really Tory enough. Lord Frost has called for the government to drop Rishi's... Um, he used the phrase bland vegetarianism and replace it with some red meat in the King's speech, by which he means tax cuts and an immediate reduction in legal migration. Not illegal, legal migration. Mm. You agree? Um, well, look, I was very disappointed by the by-election results. Of course we all were. We've got to reflect on that. Uh, governments do tend to suffer defeats in midterm by-elections and there's always local circumstances, but... We need to learn lessons from that. It seemed okay. that a large number of Conservative voters didn't turn out to vote. There weren't switches to Labour. Nobody seemed to be sold on. Yeah, we've heard this Starmer. message before. Well, it's the truth. That's what you saw. I mean, Labour's, uh, well, Labour's vote actually went down okay. in, in mid Bedfordshire. But to, to, your, to your point, which is an important one, we have to motivate people to vote Conservative. And the key there is right. actually delivering for the public in my area, which is immigration, we are working round the clock to Let reduce me... the amount of illegal migration and, we've, and our plan is beginning to work. Well, we have seen a substantial reduction in the number of small boat no. crossings this year versus last year. I don't ah, pretend yes. that that is uh, well, enough, but it, it does show yeah, it, that the plan that we put in place a year ago is beginning to work. You take me exactly to the point um, that, that I want to come to. As we were reflecting just before we started this, it's a year since the Prime Minister... Uh, became Prime Minister, launched his five pledges. And uh, let's, let's remind ourselves of those five pledges, or what he'd said about them. He said, I fully expect you to hold my government uh, to, and I to account on delivering these goals. So let, let's do a bit of that. Here are the five pledges. Ha inflation, economy, debt, blah, blah, blah. Here's how you're doing. There's an awful lot of red on that chart. I'm not going to tax you about the things that you're failing on, mm. inflation. I want to talk about the thing that you just said that you're succeeding on. 26,116 uh, on a small boat. That place does not say stop 10% of small boat. It says stop small boat. Mm. You're not doing very well, really, are you? Well, I'm not pretending that we have succeeded, this is job done. I'm saying that our plan is beginning to work. Well, you're a year on and you've, you, well, well, let me you've give, only done 10% of it. Well, it's, it's a lot more than 10% than with, with all due respect. Actually, we're, we're around a quarter reduction now in small okay. boats versus last year. And if you compare that to Italy and much of uh, Europe, small boat arrivals were up by 100%. If you look at the number of Albanians coming illegally yeah. to the UK, down by 90%. If you look at the number of people uh, who are being returned who shouldn't have come here, up okay. 75%. The number of raids on illegal workers, up 50%. The backlog in asylum cases is now falling rapidly. When I but, became uh, minister, right. we, the Home Office were making 400 asylum decisions a week. But last... We're now making 4,500 asylum decisions last... a week. So uh, on this area, we are delivering. There's right. clearly a long way to go. Okay. And much will depend on the Supreme Court's judgment with respect to our Rwanda policy uh, due in the coming months. But we are making progress and we're going to continue to deliver for the public. I wish we could talk more, but um, maybe after the Rwanda judgment, you'll come back and we'll see how you are doing then. Thank you. Good Minister, thank you very much.